Hey everybody, Tracy Brown here. I missed you all this week. I don't think I've talked to you all at all in a day or two, so I'm glad to be back. So this post and this video, um, I'm gonna have a longer accompanying blog post with this one because I think it's super important. But um, why do we blame our bodies? You know, it's almost like um, it, it. Basically, why do we blame our bodies? Because we've been taught to. We've been taught to look to something outside of ourselves is the thing that's causing the shame, the pain, the anxiety, the whatever. And so I'm just kind of starting right with the punchline. Um, you know, Anita Johnson talks about you know food and body worries, like counting calories and wanting to be a smaller size um, as the red herring. So the thing that we focus on as a way to um, understandably so, and sometimes from a survival perspective, of course, so that, um, you know, tracking and pushing ourselves and numbing ourselves and eating and not eating are all ways to just try to try to get by whatever it is that feels too much, too fast, too big, too overwhelming, too uncomfortable, whatever. And that's kind of what we do and this culture reinforces that by not talking about things that are overwhelming that are um, too much um, and we don't address things head-on so we make it about other things like you know um, we're lonely and we move to a new town so we go to a you know Weight Watchers meeting or a diet meetup or um, some kind of other thing that we put our external focus on on the food um, are our bodies and that's our shared experience versus hey <laughs> what's our real shared experiences of being human here what's going on and um, and so we get kind of looped in that you know and it is really difficult when let's say you stop dieting and now you're faced with like you know some principles of like you know with intuitive eating eat both um, eat with hunger and fullness eat with full permission. Um, you don't have to eat things you don't like. You can eat, you can stop because you know that the thing that you'd like to have, you could have again the next meal, you know, if you're hungry again. Um, that it's okay to buy clothes that fit the body you have. I mean, on and on and on, all these really wonderful, just really, if you think, if you take a step outside of the radicalness for that, of all that for a second, you say like, well, it's pretty, that seems to be kind of self-evident to like you, take care of the body you have and you honor and respect it and um, but how come we don't do that and it's because we've been taught that like that something about us is not okay and then we tend to over generalize I'm not okay and then the body gets thrown in the mix and then you of course we have this this many generational back thing about um, we have to look a certain way to be acceptable to be loved to be seen as um, as worthy or important or being worthy of being taken care of or or whatever um, you know all those things are there or be worthy of getting you know praise or appreciation so I mean, there's a lot of reasons and that's why we blame the body if I just had a smaller body um, those things wouldn't happen and I'm not saying we, we all know that if you're in a larger body there's a, an invisibleness to it in terms of people feeling like um, we're doing the good thing or the right thing. Um, some people have judgments and assumptions, but I look at it as like, yeah, well, of course they do. That's what they were taught. That doesn't mean that they're right. And I think the hard thing is that instead of focusing on and, and starting to build trust and faith in ourselves that maybe our experience <laughs> is right <laughs> and valid, it's okay, my experience doesn't match what they believe, so I must be wrong. And that's where we have to like, if we're doing that with our bodies or with our food, our job is to say, wait a minute, this is actually um, all my experiences with food, with body, with trying to change it, have gotten me to this place. And not in a place of your body changing, it's just more of like, um, nobody can know those things unless they actually talk to me about it and ask me about it versus if there's an assumption made well you know that's just based on some beliefs they have but it doesn't mean that they're right about me 
and that's where we have to keep coming home to versus, okay, well, since my body doesn't match their expectations or their beliefs, then how I feel or what I've been through didn't, doesn't count, isn't seen or heard, doesn't matter. We have to decide that we're not going to put ourselves in that kind of container anymore. It's just the decision. So whether this is eating disorder recovery, the space you're in, or you're like, you know what? I'm done with Weight Watchers. I'm done with the Whole30. I'm done with all these different things that are externalize basically myself and my focus and where I put my energy. And I'm going to come back in and come back home to myself and stop making the body the problem. There's nothing wrong with eating in a way that makes you feel more supported and able to feel more vital. That's not an issue. That's something that I encourage you to do. It's, you know, am I doing anything I'm doing as a way to be more at home in myself or I'm doing it because I believe somehow if I change myself, something magically will be better. You know, I won't have thoughts, I won't have feelings, I won't have memories that I don't like. Other people will like me more. If it's any for those reasons, it's the red herring and you're just going to be spinning and looping for as long as we try to pursue that. So I hope this video was helpful. When I talk about, when I talk about embodiment and decoding and being able to um, just one little molecule more at a time, build some trust in yourself and orient towards more safety in either in, your, in yourself or in the life or experiences or things around you. Um, that's what all this is about is seeing that like, you know, whenever we're even doubting ourselves um, in terms of what we know probably to be best for us, if we're doubting that and we're making it about like the quick now, I'm going to do this thing so I can feel better now. Just know that's, a, that's kind of how we're taught and it's hard, you know, risk taking adventure to say, you know what, no, I'm not going to listen to that old tape, whether it's my old tape, what's external of me tape, I'm not going to do that the second. How can I orient towards something that's actually more life affirming? start from there so I hope that was helpful to you uh, I'm gonna put a, um, a link down to this decoding guide I have around that kind of stuff and I hope it's helpful um, but I do encourage you to explore other tools so when you're feeling big challenge that because when people say that you might be or have or however you label it for yourself in a, in a bigger body that may be true but that doesn't mean that something's wrong with you it just means there's something that's feeling uncomfortable in your experience about that. And I'm not talking about physical discomforts of, um, you know, clothing or the way things in the world are arranged. I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm not, you know, and that's a whole nother video and I don't, don't dismiss any of that kind of stuff, but it, this is more about this internal too muchness. And if it's not discerned out from actual physiologic, like, okay, I feel like my, my, I'm actually physically, things are moving slow. This is my gut. Something's up. I have a heartburn. Um, that's totally all real. And, you know, we can address that with some lifestyle stuff. I'm not talking about those things, though. I'm really talking about that unless you practice naming it, sometimes it feels like that nebulous, I don't know what the bigness is or what the emotion is. We need to start really getting good at that and being able to name that experience. And once you do, you open up a whole nother world for yourself of um, problem solving and self care and, and honestly hope that like these things aren't too big, that they are navigable basically. So thank you so much for watching. If you have any comments or questions or whatever, I'm here to answer in tomorrow's um, Friday. So Q and A Friday, if you have any questions, please put them in any kind of messaging to me here, my email, whatever, and I'm happy to answer that um, on the live video tomorrow. So thanks so much for watching and take care.